Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to First Glance's 23rd Annual Film Festival. This is our first year as a virtual film festival, and we are grateful to be working in collaboration with itsashort.com, who will be hosting all of our events and screenings online. My name is Jackie Dallas. I am an LA-based actress, and today I am so excited to be talking with the incredible team of We Need to Talk. This includes our writer-director, Todd Wolf. Members of the cast, James, Crystal, Jonathan, Emily, and Trey. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, how's everyone doing? Yeah, Great. Very good. good. Oh, yeah. Thanks so very much great. for having us. Yeah, thank you. Very cool, very cool. Um, yeah, thanks for coming in from all over. Um, you guys, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about your movie. We need to talk. It's so fun. Um, I feel really lucky that I was able to screen it before everyone else because um, it's not released yet. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, Correct. this will be the uh, the first time um, physically at mm -hmm. the festival that it'll be screened. Very exciting. Very exciting. All right. Well, let's go ahead and set the stage then since no one has seen it yet. Um, Todd, you're the director, writer, creator of this film. Uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about it and how you came up with the idea for the movie? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, it basically follows a, uh, a, a famous video game influencer who, uh, you know, is, is more, um, he's more in love with himself than he is with the folks around him, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day is, uh, or at the first thing in the morning, his girlfriend basically says, we need to talk when I get home, kind of puts him into a spiral the rest of the day and he has to kind of figure out, you know, what's most important in life. It's, it's basically a coming of age, a modern coming of age story, somewhat mm -hmm. of a character, you know, kind of a character story. But um, as far as how I came up with it, it was just a couple ideas floating around in my head. I play video games and, uh, and I've worked extensively with some uh, YouTube influencers and I've always been fascinated kind of just about that personality. And um, eventually kind of all these ideas just kind of merged into one and that's kind of uh, how I came up with it. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I think it's always something that we kind of draw from our experiences, right, when we create things. Um, for everyone who is a cast member here, uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about you guys as well. Um, if you guys want to just go through and introduce yourselves, um, how you got involved with the film, and a little bit about the character that you play. Uh, James, let's start with you since you're the lead. Sure. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm James. Yeah, how did, how did, this, how did this start, Todd? Um, <laughs> I really love the script. In fact, this is one of the first projects I just switched agencies, and found my favorite agents I've ever had. And this is the very first project they sent and said, you need to get this. So I said, cool, no pressure, thank you. Um, but then proceeded to create like a seven or eight minute miniature movie, basically with sound effects, with everything. Mean, I just really, really wanted this role. I thought it was hilarious writing. I thought the character was something that I could dive into and, and attack and, and do well. So I went and created this, sent it in, and the feedback was essentially you fucked everything up. I had no intention of casting somebody in this role that looked like you. If I do happen to cast you, and this is directly from Todd, I have to change everyone else I was thinking of, so thanks. And <laughs> that was kind no of thing. my response. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, it was a real big backhanded compliment, but I very much yeah. took it as a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, and it just continued from there and, uh, I'm very, very grateful that it to have been given the opportunity and so psyched that you did cast everybody around me because I would not have been able to pull it off without them. You know, let me let me jump in there because he's thrown me under the bus. I will say he made he, he made the greatest audition tape ever. Like it was so like professional and like he, he went all in. And it was one of those things like he did such a great job that it it totally destroyed like what I thought I wanted. And it kind of like took over and I was like, this is him. So it, it kind of re it rewrote the story for me that he did such a good job. So as much as he wants to poke fun at me, he, he did a great job. And, and it was that audition tape as well as everybody else. You know, everybody's audition tapes were just so good that it made me rethink the characters and they made them their own, which I think shows. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's why they're all here, right? <laughs> Crystal, why don't you jump in? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. I had the audition and I loved the script as well. It seemed like it was really fun. And my audition scene was me yelling and arguing, which I love. So that was great and really fun to do. Um, and yeah, and Ali is his, you know, girlfriend and, you know, he's the classic doesn't pay enough attention to me and <laughs> um, loves his career more than me. Um, but yeah, it was a great set and everyone was amazing and it was so great to work with everybody and it was a blast. This really was one of the, you know, most fun jobs I've ever done. It was, it was a, it was a good time. Wow. <laughs> who next Jonathan sure yeah um and, and piggybacking on what Crystal said like it was so I mean the movie is like 90 percent James which is, which is great and then we discovered like the one the couple of days that we were all there like we all hung out we were like oh man we wish that we could have hung out more. We had fun <laughs> that night. it was a great night um we all got yeah. along really well um but yeah I uh this audition was was really interesting because like I, I, my formative years were in Pennsylvania and I had watched uh, one of uh, like Todd's first movie, which was this b- very big, like Pennsylvania, I love you kind of thing. Like it's just like middle Pennsylvania. And so I was like, man, between knowing kind of the areas, uh, also my wife is from outside Philadelphia um, and playing video games too much, uh, almost ruined my life. And on top of that, having um like my my last day job was as a videographer like was like you know doing videos for cosmo and esquire and stuff like that and editing so just like coming from that world of uh putting together short short uh, uh short range videos like that um it just felt like this is the i'm the guy i've done this this is my life <laughs> this is 100 percent what i've done um and especially once i talked to todd about it i was just like i understand this to such a uh you know micro level um and it was just a, such a privilege and fun time putting it all together. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It was made for you, the role was written for you. <laughs> yeah, but it was a weird Cosmo, or co- uh, yeah, weird cosmic thing mm-hmm. that not, not knowing me was like, I'm gonna write for this guy I haven't met yet. Yeah, it was funny when it, when, it, when we talked before, uh, after you read it, it was one of these things that I think you sent me your phone number and I recognized the area code from like my hometown area and I was like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we, we fell in love instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, how about you? Um, well, first of all, I just want to say hi to everybody. And um, the way this role came about for me is me and Todd Wolf, we go way back. Todd, I'm talking about over 10 years. Todd uh, produced a film called Streets that I starred in with Meek Mill. And um, we just hit it off. You know, we became brothers and we have a, a, a tight bond, you know, our respect for each other just goes way back. And when he told me about this role, Tango Unchained, I jumped at it because Tango is somebody that shoots straight from the hip. He keeps it real. And um, I've never played a role where I had to sit and play video games. So people, people are used to seeing me, you know, play these bad guys and all of this type of stuff on television and films. And, when I read the script, I said, Todd, I'm, I'm Tango. You, you got to put me in this Tango. <laughs> and, um, you know, just just looking at the whole cast that, that was involved, you know, I'm, I'm fans of everybody's on here. And, and I just wanted to, you know, just jump at this project and just watching it, man. It, it just turned out to be such an amazing project that I'm so honored and grateful and thankful to be a part of. Yeah, I will. I will say uh, Trey's the one person who didn't out audition. I pretty much when I was writing it in the back of my mind, I was like, Trey's got to be all over this. So I'm just thankful he said yes, as well as everybody else. So yeah, Trey, you're so funny in the movie, man. Like there's yeah. so many funny guys. Thank you. <laughs> so Y'all are funny too, man. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. And Emily. Yeah, well, to double piggyback off uh, Crystal and Jonathan there, I don't know if he's still calling piggybacking after that, but we had a blast. Like the few days that I had showed up in Philly to walk on set and pretty much light scenes on fire, which is what Amber does, um, was probably solely the most fun experience I've had on a film set. And that's all thanks to Todd and the environment he created and 
and the people you put together in this time, like you were, I don't know, you played Tetris with us in the sense like none of us had met each other and it was just like, whoa, like, we just had a <laughs> blast. Um, and I love a loose cannon character. I love a loose cannon and Amber is a hundred percent that. I do believe she's solely based off of someone Todd may have known in the past, but I wouldn't want to give too much away out of his, you know, personal life. Um, <laughs> and, but she was a hoot and a holler and Todd was just kind of like, go with it, do whatever you want. And, you know, so I didn't create arson, unfortunately, but it, it was, you know, in the writing. This close. For sure. This I was this close, guys. It was this close. And thank God, you know. We're all still here 2020 to survive it. So awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Everyone, you guys vibe so well. You guys have such a good chemistry. Everyone had such a distinct character in this movie. And it really like it just really fit together really amazingly. And yeah, I can imagine that one of the like, tell me about the challenges of making a movie like this. Because I can imagine that you guys are all on set by yourself, talking to yourself, talking to a reader. Because you're all supposed to be in your different homes, different places. I mean, how did, how did you guys make it so that you had such authentic chemistry bouncing off each other? I think we liked each other. A good point. Yeah, I mean, so can we continue piggybacking? We're just going to continue this train of thought, whatever yeah. you want to call it. But, um, you know, Jonathan mentioned the first time we got together, he came into town and we were ecstatic. We were texting like, hey, let's let's go meet. We're supposed to have been buddies for 10 years at this point or longer. And we did just that and had a killer dinner and just loved each other's company. And the same goes with every single other cast member. And I think that spawns from just the, the mutual respect. Everybody came in ready to do their job, so kind, so excited. That always starts at the top, and Todd, as, as Trey said, set that tone from the beginning. Um, but everybody carried it up. I mean, these, these are really freaking talented and nice people, and I think that's why everybody just loved each other immediately. And then in terms of filming, Todd, what did we do? I think we literally did 16 or 20 pages straight of dialogue on day one of filming, and I know everybody else had to do that, Trey, you know what I'm talking about, when you're gaming, <clears throat> you may just keep talking, 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 but you got to know like a third of the script off mm -hmm. book at time in order to make it authentic. But um, it was actually pretty yeah. fun. I'd never done that before in a movie. But then also you, you James, were uh, like most of the stuff that was alone was like, it was, wasn't was you uh, like alone with the crew for like a week and a half? <laughs> like, yeah. like, <laughs> like you're bouncing off the wall. A hundred percent. I was so psyched to have friends when you yeah. guys showed up. <laughs> I remember when we showed up, you were like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> I've been talking to you for two weeks, but we've never met. It's fine. It's fine. So I sweet. Crazy. I yeah, like I mean, was uh, what, experiment. <laughs> Well, for the and, and I got to give a lot of credit to everybody that was on the gaming side. Like it was literally James and I for a week talking to each other, and then me mm -hmm. pretending to be five other characters and five other voices, oh, hoping it was going to all work out. At well, the which end, you so. killed, man. I got to give you major yeah. credit and thank you for knowing the characters as in and out as you did. Um, and you know, he did. He did show me some of the audition tapes. M, mm -hmm. I remember yours in particular being fantastic and scary at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that makes um, sense. That checks out for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that honestly helped because I had a, a face, I had a little bit of a tone, and then Todd just had it so honed in that, you know, he came prepared, man. He had a shot list ready to go. I mean, dude, your, your preparation yeah. for this and your attention to detail made our lives super easy. Yeah, for me, I had a, um, my experience was amazing too because like Todd was saying, James said it as well. Todd had to be every character that wasn't going back and forth, you know? So me sitting there looking at the TV and Todd, you know, uh, saying lines from James's character, Jonathan, I mean, and, and, and everybody that, that, that's a part of the movie, it was just, it was amazing. I had so much fun. And like I said, this was something, this was a role that I had never, you know, took on before. And, and I remember I asked Todd a thousand questions. I kept saying, Todd, <laughs> Is, is my dialogue coming off good, man? How do I look? What, do I look silly? Do I look corny? Or, and he's like, Tango, you got it. Just relax and get it get it going. Because my thing is, and I'm sure everybody's thing as an actor or as an actress is to just bring their A game and, you know, give it their all. And I just wanted to just do my best for my buddy Todd, you know, because Todd definitely deserves everything that is coming along with this film, you know? 
Well, also, right. like when you don't have that, like so much of acting is a connection. And then when you don't have that physical connection, because the person's yeah. literally mm -hmm. in the room or in, yeah. in the state, it's definitely that thing where you're just kind of like, I hope this is fine. Yeah. I don't have anything on the other yeah. side, like mirror and like tell me if thing if anything's believable at all. And I'll tell you, I'll t I, and I think, and I think the only the only thing I had to go on was how great you guys owned the characters in your tapes in your auditions, and 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 it was just me hoping that you know, you know the 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 wallpaper matches the drapes and the couch. Like I'm just I'm like I hope this all works as much as I think but but what I'll say is when Crystal came in and that was like the first time we had like a real person with <laughs> with James we were like oh it's it's two people this is amazing uh <laughs> you were just as excited as I was <laughs> oh I was and as soon as we started rolling on two humans I was like oh this is perfect like they are I believe this wholeheartedly and and that's a heavy lift and and I think Crystal deserves a lot of credit for that. Cause I was like, you know, it was just me and James playing pretend for a week and she came in and just livened up the whole thing. Yeah. I do remember you guys being very excited. Like, Oh, a person. <laughs> I mean, you could do no wrong. Like, Oh my God, that take was excellent. She's like, we yeah. weren't even filming, but no. still should have been. <laughs> Did we get it? Roll the camera. A weird thing too for me was like, there were the scene where like like the breakup scene that like Joe and uh, Scott had um, was probably I think the longest scene I had done on camera ever because that like that thing was like seven pages <laughs> like you know and so yeah. I remember walking yeah. in there with uh, some trepidation and then afterwards felt so great because we had just it's just straight up dialogue but the whole thing is very like finding all these different notes and like the way we the blocking ended up being and stuff and. It's like one of the things I'm most proud of, like that I've ever done, because it's just like not boring. At least to me, but maybe I'm biased because I was in it, but it Thank didn't you. feel boring at all. Like it was just like a lot, of, like so much stuff happening on a very long scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Todd I, wrote some bloody long scenes. <laughs> well, I, mean, I love it. Well, and I also cut a lot of nonsense too. A lot of yapping that I had to cut out of it. But well, I, I love how everybody took ownership, and and mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I hope. I hope they felt it was collaborative because, you know, the the words were just a roadmap. And then, you know, what I love seeing was everybody breathe their own life into it and us all kind of figuring out, like, you know, Jonathan and James, you know, telling me like, yeah, that's stupid. We, why, why are we saying that? And like figuring out a better way to kind of say something. And uh, I don't know, it was a team effort and, and I, I couldn't be more proud of, of what we ended up with. Mm -hmm. And only from the standpoint of, of hoping that uh, I made everybody proud that was involved because I was so appreciative that they gave their time and energy and, and, and uh, all their talent to the project um, because I couldn't ask for a better team. And I just wanted to do that, do them proud. And we do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On that note, we need to talk to you. Is it in the works? We need yeah. to talk to you. I mean, it sounds hey. like between James and Todd doing that week of shooting alone that you've been preparing for a quarantine movie <laughs> since yes. two yeah. years ago. That's what I'm hearing. If there's any type of movie that we made in quarantine, Todd Wolf. Yeah. Have Todd us to a screen. <laughs> He'll come up with it. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just picturing Todd in my head saying all of the characters talking to doing Kyle's lines and <laughs> oh wow very that funny was so funny yeah so kind of funny. Funny. <laughs> what did you text me Jonathan your favorite line from the movie oh, um, yeah immediately into my my vernacular mouse dick will 100 <laughs> percent yes yeah, yeah. I'm quite proud to be a part of this uh, cinematic vehicle that's bringing back profanity. Mm -hmm. and creative insult to the screen. I think we've missed it for a while. You know, yeah. it's good to have a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds like That's there's true. some new ads to the Webster's Dictionary, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Kyle was so funny. The, um, like, that character is hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kyle was really funny. I died every time he came to the screen. How much of all of this was uh, improv versus scripted? Because it seemed like there was just so much space in between where y'all were going off. Especially you, James, a lot of your scenes. Was that a lot of improv or was everything scripted? So especially you as a trained actor, it really felt like you didn't know any of your lines. So. Um, <laughs> that's half true. That's <laughs> no, you looked so natural that it looked like you hadn't planned them. Right, just naturally an asshole. It really felt yeah. well. Um, I will say 
that we got, we had a lot of freedom and some of my favorite days, especially with Jonathan, man, we had days where we'd kind of say the lines and then we'd be like, Todd, we'll just keep going. And be like, just keep rolling. And we would just riff and say the most horrific and appropriate shit we'd come up with. Much of which ended up in the trailer and the movie, which I'm very proud of. Good job. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, there was certainly, um, well, it, you know, well, a couple of folks here come from improv and things like that. And, and I actually wrote this. I, when I wrote this, I was in an improv group and like all the names are people just from improv groups that I work with. Amber well, is actually from my group. improv group. I did not know. Yeah. 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 Amber is from my improv group. She actually used to wear a glove to smoke cigarettes. Scott was one of the guys in my, like, so I wrote it during improv thinking I would just shoot it with them on a whim. Um, so with that being said, I definitely encourage like extra improv, anything you want to say, just kind of throw it in there. And everybody, I mean, there, I could, I could go through every scene and, and there are lines that everybody plus by just saying some extra stuff. Well, it was wh whether it was crystal, like flipping him off first thing in the morning. And I was like, I love that. Or, That's love. Or, you know, <laughs> I don't know both your stupid faces from Emily or Jonathan saying like, it doesn't, it doesn't smell like sex when he walked into the room. I'm just, and I mean, James was always <laughs> adding stupid stuff. I, it, it was, it was, it just, you know, it made everything better. Like, it, again, it was, it was these, everybody here elevated this to a, to a degree that I couldn't have hoped for. Yeah. And we I, laughed our asses off making this yeah. thing. I mean, it really was <laughs> to the point of we were having a tough time getting stuff done, but that's, that's what a comedy should be. Yeah, it's a good environment to work in, you know, the work mm -hmm. is fun. I love it. I love it. And it shows because everyone's little, you know, the little quirks that you brought, it brought such a level of authenticity, you know, it, not just the humor, but um, just a uniqueness and brought every character to life. Uh, Todd, I want to ask, because I think this has been tiptoed around a few times. Um, how much of these characters are based on people that you know in real life or even the plot of it like have you has someone come up to you and said like we need to talk, we need to talk? now yeah. everybody does but um, <laughs> no I, I i think probably a while ago you know i thought of a i was like oh what if somebody said we need to talk at the beginning of a movie and ended up being like nothing what we thought of by the end oh that's mm -hmm. interesting you know you write that in your phone and you're like and you forget about it and then this idea of this influencer YouTube person, like just being a maniac, not knowing how to like socially interact with real people, but like, and I was like, well, that's interesting. And I started marinating on that. And then this video game saying, you know, I'm a filmmaker, I'm an editor um, a lot. I edit a lot of stuff here in my, in my basement and, you know, in between rendering things out, play some video games and it's amazing to me who's playing video games at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday and this is where you start hearing all this stuff and you and you have these you know you have these personal connections with people playing games and I was like oh man like the things on here like nobody would believe that this happens in this video game space I started writing all that down and then one day it just hit me all these things combined and I, and I, I think I wrote this in probably like three weeks like once it hit me I was like oh this all works well together and um i think we shot with like the second the second version of it like i only rewrote re rewrote it once and that's what we shot with and then the third rewrite was on set <laughs> yes <laughs> and then in, in the edit as well <laughs> sure. and you edited this yourself as well is that correct i did i did uh and it was just um it was just the constraint of time and, and, and resources. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, asking an editor to put together something where it's like all these people disconnected talking to one another in a video game space. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand those rhythms like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I told like the editors that were involved in it, in the project and the project, you know, as assistants. And I'm like, I, I'm, I apologize. Like, I don't, I just don't know how to communicate this to you. Like I should yeah. just do it. And then we'll, I, I got to figure it out. And, uh, and it, took a, it took a minute. On top of that, there's probably a good 150 to 200 visual effects in this, in this movie. Right. Because every screen, every TV, every phone, everything you see was all done like six months, nine months later. Like we had to create our own video game 
for headshots, like created mm-hmm. a game that you can play. Um, and then we had to find another game to replace the other one that we had. And we literally found that like 45 days ago. And that's wow. in there now. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been intense on the post side. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think I could have tortured anybody else but myself. <laughs> so that's kind of how it ended up. Came out great. Um, let's get a little deeper. Still then. I think this yeah. film has a really great message. Um, on the surface, it's definitely a comedy because it's so funny. It's quirky. It's nerdy. But under the humor, I think there's an incredible amount of heart to it. Um, I love that you were able to point out that you know, in this day and age, I think a lot of people are becoming more disconnected in real world interactions. We're relying more on uh, virtual friendships and virtual interactions. Why do you think that is? Is this an intentional like social commentary you made or was it just a reflection of the times you think? I mean, I'll answer that, but I'd be curious to know what everybody else thinks mm-hmm. when they read it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think we all get wrapped up in how important our career is, whether it's on social media or not. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is as much a, this is as much of an apology to my wife as as the movie is as it is you know a, 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 I'm not pointing fingers at people I'm kind of like looking inside like you know I think we get wrapped up that you know our work is more important than anything else and we kind of neglect sometimes the people we care about and and I, and I think I definitely injected a little bit of that uh, uh, of my own personal experience into the movie with that. I think it's also a reminder that, you know, you can have everything and have nothing if everything is revolved around fame and money and only those career goals, but your quality of relationships um, aren't suffi- aren't good, then what do you really have? So it's really a reminder for us to, you know, appreciate social media for what it is, but not put too much emphasis on it and to make sure that we keep our real connections with our friends and family and loved ones, you know, make sure those are strong because that's really what life's all about. Sharing things as often in person as possible, I think, and keeping those, those true bonds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also um, for me, yeah, social media, yeah, you want to go down? Yeah. Oh, sorry, God. No, no, for me, I was, um, I was just going to add on to what everybody else was saying, uh, reading the script and actually, you know, watching it come out in, be a reality. It's we just can't take the people that really love us for granted. Um, one scene that was very powerful was uh, when Crystal and James was arguing. You know, so that that was a real deep scene that I actually called Todd after um, you know watching that because I can I can say that myself. You know, that was that was me. You know, uh, in the past when me and my wife was just you know getting together and everything else seemed like it mattered way more than she did, you know, but at the same time, it, it's about, you know, the people that really care about you and about, you know, who loves you and who's going to be there for the long haul, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to say something to Emily. Emily, soon as you step foot on screen, you lit the whole film up. I love it. And it was, you remind me so much of my sister Candace. I cannot wait till she sees it. Because um, <laughs> she's always joking with me. She's always I remember when me and Aisha, my wife, when we were getting ready to get married, she joked and cracked jokes all day to my wife <laughs> about how terrible I was. She shouldn't be with me. I mean, but your character really, like I said, it, it really, I was, I loved it. You know what I'm saying? I really loved it. And um, Like I said, it goes back to that scene with Crystal and Jane. That was a real powerful scene for me because I really seen myself in that. I told, I told Todd, you know, I'm a man, but I got a little emotion. You know, men get emotional. Too. <laughs> I was like, I got a little emotional in that scene because it reminded me a lot of some of the things that I've been through in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to say briefly, like the the whole relationship with social media is really funny because it's like the um, uh, that cliche of like if a tree falls in the woods, does, does it, or if you can't hear it, is did it really fall? Whatever it is, and it's that kind of thing where it's like when you are, uh, I don't know, people say it. Um, <laughs> But like, I get it. But it's that thing though, it's like when you don't when you don't check your social media, uh like obviously there's tons of stuff that are still happening and people may or may not be talking about you and each other and all these things, and you have like you feel like you have an ear to the ground, like you're aware of that all the time. 
But then when you step away from me, you're like, oh, I don't need to know any of these things. Like almost all of it is irrelevant. Um, but it's like finding that balance, uh, you know, you can see what happens to the great Scott, where it's just like, if that's all you think about, which happens to a lot of us, you know, it's just com completely ruined part of your brain for sure. Mm -hmm. I have to head out, but it was so great to Thank you, Crystal. Nice to see you, Crystal. Go be, yeah. be amazing and rested. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. 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 All right. Yeah, Crystal is working on set. Mm -hmm. so she is doing awesome. So everybody go watch Young and the Restless, because that's where yeah. Oh. Oh, but like Jonathan said, it looked like she was in Versailles. So maybe yeah. we go to Paris? <laughs> yeah. be better, I've never we been. should do a screening in Paris. Let's I've all go. Been, Todd, been, Todd been. how do you think about Paris? I'm in. I'm I knew in. it. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Should. Yeah. It's awesome. Let's call the production company, borrow the credit card, book some flights. We'll just do business. Yeah. We want to do first. It's James, fine. I always liked yeah. your attitude, James. I always liked it. It'll go get her when we're in business. Exactly. Absolutely. I'll be there. And Todd, I'll give you this one for free, but the, the sequel could be called We Still Need to Talk. We need to talk. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or, or how about We Talked, Now What? <laughs> we Talked Now What? Wow. We're just simply, <laughs> we need to talk again. Again, yeah. <laughs> or just, well, I, or I, just, think one, I think we the one line that, my, that anybody, so my wife says to me, then I'm like, oh, no, is I was thinking. So I was thinking. And I'm like, oh, I was thinking. No, 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 no. Let's not do any thinking. So that's the next one. <laughs> you heard it. You got witnesses. He's right on the next <laughs> you heard it first. <laughs> I think I think we need to talk is still better than we need to text. You know, yeah, it could go sure. really poorly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Long movie. Todd, would you ever consider making a sequel to this song? Just to work it out? Uh I don't know if there's much else to be said, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I I you know I I I love the characters, though. I will say that I, after, you know, after all the, the, the work and effort and sweat equity that, that I put into this, like, I love these characters. and I love what everybody put into them. And every time they pop up on screen, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so happy. And, and what I like to write, I would love to probably write more for them, especially Amber. Because uh, in, in, I think in my initial, when I was writing, Amber showed up at the house and then just mm -hmm. was gone never came back and i was like i miss i missed her so much that i was like i've got to put her back in at a certain point and and then that's how that kind of came back but I, I i love all the characters but i don't know if they have i i tried to give each one kind of a character arc slight um so you kind of knew where they were where they what they went on to do where they were kind of going um so hopefully they can all rest easy and, and i don't have to uh keep uh keep telling their story. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, before, when we were shooting this, TikTok wasn't really a thing. So it seems like a natural progression for- Is that true? Was I TikTok mean, not around? Like Maybe Joe out. becomes the next TikTok star. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Yeah. Wow! Did we film that bit, like that long ago? That TikTok was not even birthed. No, it was, it was around, but like nobody, it wasn't talked. It wasn't in the ethos. Like everybody. no one was talking, right? Or ticking, or, or ticking. Yeah, yeah people been people been ticking since you know forever. Well, that's what it is. We need to TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> you we need to TikTok about something else. That's for damn sure. Yeah. yeah. Todd, you know, I've never asked you for anything, but if you could do a TikTok video, that would really make my year. 2020 has been a little bit. You know, so. I'd appreciate yeah. that as well. I second that request. Yeah, CJ, make make us happy, man. Just make us happy. Add it to the credits. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, I know your daughter would appreciate it too. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah. of too. <laughs> she would absolutely hate it. She runs the We Need to Talk TikTok uh, account though, so. There is a TikTok? Jesus, I'm not even. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all her. Hysterical. Mm. Do you guys um do you guys yourself like follow up with social media and uh, kind of participate in that culture? Like how much mm -hmm. of this movie do you relate to on a personal level? I mean Well, I mean, Amber and I are obviously very much alike. Um, I think that's clear and clearly um I've now gone to therapy, so I feel like this movie really helped me. Um, <laughs> but 
I don't know. I shy, I shy away from social media quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. I take long breaks from it at all costs, but it is a tool for, for business as well. And um, I think we, as people crave authenticity before pretty much anything else, and yeah. that can get confusing with everything that's out there. But it's a, it's very easy to stay connected. You know, we have friends all across the world now and, and stories that can be heard from different people and we're getting to, you know, it's such a blessing to have that and seeing how we can balance that is really the true trick of our time because we've never had that before. We've never been people who've had this before and there's no right way to go about it. It's just seeing what works for you. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you're right. It can either be a powerful tool or it can be something incredibly destructive. So Mm -hmm. it's up to everyone to find that balance, see if it's something that's fun and interactive or artificial and stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's kind of sad when you see a, a lot of influencers um, on camera. It looks like their lives are perfect, and then you go to a mm-hmm. set or a shoot, and it's just super stressful and not fun. And I've always wondered, like, why are you doing it if it's not fun? Even from an mm-hmm. acting perspective, of course, there's long hours, there's work that goes into it, but you should always be striving to have fun. That's why we got into this, and I, I think that's an, an hugely important in entertainment in general. I mean, that's one of the main reasons we all jump into it. So. If it feels too much like a tool or you're stressed, you don't get enough likes and comments, like maybe uh, maybe pivot to something else or don't put as much yeah. emphasis on it. Yeah, absolutely. If there's one thing social media has showed us, it's that there's so many different things you can now do in the world. You know, I like I think that James is right. If things are not, if it's not serving you in a certain way, you might even be able to find something you would have never even thought of before from just sure. the way people share their stories on there and just, you know, give it a try. Yeah. you know well, give anything a try 10 times at least mm-hmm. i mean that's actually the coolest stuff is you look like you can learn to play ukulele in an afternoon i mean there are some really great yeah. uh resources because of it yeah the, the wild thing about it is that it's the entire spectrum it's like it goes all the yeah. way from the the most positive experience you could have uh seeing either about something tragic that you didn't know about that you're like oh i wish mm-hmm. more people were talking about this or this mm-hmm. specific story that's really interesting i can't believe this person exists all the way to like the dredges of society with like you know, racist, homophobic, like <laughs> everything is just like, and the fact that it's really hard to find that in between, it's it's just like mm-hmm. weird thing to navigate. Um, also, how, how often, how often do you want to look at it? You know? Yeah. Right. And I think that toxicity you're talking about was something that I kind of struggled with when I was writing this, because, you know, there's a certain amount of lack of a better word, shit talking that kind of happens between game players and, and you know, friends online. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, that there was a, certainly a balance of, um, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted to make sure it was it was authentic, but I also wanted to make sure that I wasn't giving anybody a pass or permission to kind of like, kind of dive into super negative territory or, you know, encourage kind of that toxic behavior. So it, it was certainly a fine balance um, in this film, um, as well as trying to, you know, you let an actor say an F, the F word once, and they definitely want to say it way more. I don't know <laughs> that, about that. Probably, uh, you know, that's difficult as well. You know what? Was it? You wonder how many times you just say it before it becomes an R movie, right? Yeah. Oh, it's an R <laughs> movie. For sure. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting about what you just said about the, um, yeah, those interactions that you have in the video game community. I never thought about it like this, but something about, seeing it in visual form and having a face to the person that might be saying the shitty thing definitely softens the blows of whatever they could possibly be saying. Cause like when, like the time I played video, I, I've stopped playing like online, like listening to other people years ago, just because, you know, when there's no like human behind it and they're just saying this thing and you're like, I don't know if this person's joking or whatever, then basically like, if you only heard what Kyle is saying, you're just like, fuck this guy. <laughs> like why, why is he part of Group. especially if you don't know what he looked like what his life is like or any of that stuff and and all those people like if you were to do the same movie but never show the faces of the other people that uh scott is talking about all those lines will land so differently mm-hmm. um that's what it's like in real life so it's like a, it's a weird that's a funny juxtaposition mm-hmm, you're yeah. right i never thought about it that way but 100 yeah. percent. i'm always here for like the poignant thoughts you know what i mean i'm i'm here with you okay. Well, that was a balancing act in the edit to make sure that it all looked like they were in on the joke. And then, you know, everybody could laugh at the situation, but not necessarily laugh at an individual 
specifically, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, Kyle, Kyle is definitely the fire starter. It was always Emily and Kyle. If I needed to push Scott into an uncomfortable place, it was always Amber or uh, Kyle just to kind of light that fire and, and get things out of control. But it was finding that balance to like, at least let the audience know, like, you know, when people would talk smack back and forth that they'd laugh at it. That they mm-hmm. said, you know, they understood that like, these are just my boys and we're having fun that I'm not like, you know, they're not damaging my psyche by telling me I have a small, having small genitalia. Friends and bullying online. Yeah. No, exactly. I did that needle really, really well. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's why YouTube, that's why YouTube didn't want us to use YouTube because they were very concerned about, you know, the bullying aspect of it you know they were like oh let's not do that so you know that's why we have our own version yeah you yeah youtube is like we don't want you to do the bullying that we're known for (laughs) so like please (laughs) exactly don't 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 let anybody know about this you know nobody's ever heard of of youtube so please don't tell anybody (laughs) (laughs) um if there was like one message one takeaway after watching this movie for the audience what would that be um i think honestly it's that life is short so Mm -hmm. life is very very short and be kind to the people that are around be kind to everybody it really is just a reminder that we're all the same doesn't really matter what you're doing if you're the most famous video gamer in the world or you're just playing for fun it doesn't matter you're all in the same same setting same world and i think it's just a good reminder for us to come together as, as humans and people. Yeah. yeah don't yeah. take your friends for granted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. In my life. Except for Joe. You always kind of navigate that and it's just like, you know the instance you do because you're just like, why does this person all of a sudden not care about me as much? Or why don't I care about this person as much? Because yeah, you've just been acting like your relationship doesn't really mean anything to you. Yeah. All right, I wanna go ahead and close up with one last question. This is gonna be a fun rapid fire question. So one of the the things I liked about this movie was like the constant misdirect about what this is about. So what is the worst thing a person can say to you after saying, we need to talk? James? (laughs) The worst thing. I think this is all quite a subjective, subjective response. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to have kids anytime soon. So like, you know, something along those lines might be a little scary. My girlfriend's on the same page, but if she said that, I would be slightly concerned. Yeah. I immediately went into the actor side of things where it's like imagining my showrunner be like, we need to talk. Uh, you're being replaced. Mm. <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That would hurt. Awful. Ow. Yeah, right. um, for me, I mean, I I gotta say anything negative. I mean, because lately, <laughs> just think about what, it's been. It's been a lot of people around the world that has been hit with. We need to talk. This just happened, you know, and it's just. I mean, I'm talking about mind blowing things that could change your life. Negative, and it's anything negative. I I I, I can leave it at that. Um. Because yeah, nobody. I'm gonna ever, be honest with you though. Yeah, this this like, is a little bit. This is a little bit on the funny side, but me and my wife just recently became grandparents. Oh wow! So our daughter. Congratulations! Yeah, I got a grandchild. Yeah. But congrats. When we were hit with, we need to talk. At the time, that was bad news for me, because <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute, you you're pregnant," and boom. But now, of course, it's our granddaughter. She's six months. She's amazing. They're doing well, and you know, and, but but that was one of those moments where it was like, oh, uh, what's happening? What what's yeah. going to happen? How's it, what's up with the uh, child's father? And y'all not married yet? And you know, I mean, just a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff that follows with we need to talk. You know, mind just starts going. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. has anybody ever said like we need to talk? You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it should yeah, be. Right. Yeah. That's how it, it should be. Yeah. Oh, God. How about yeah, we I need to talk? That. 2020 is actually starting over. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <dark day>. oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I'm on the same page with James. Like, we need to talk. This child is actually yours. Wow. Or we need to talk. Go take a look at your toilet. Yeah. Or, you know, we need to talk. This is all just a simulation and you're in a padded room somewhere. That's... Mm. Yeah. I might be okay with that are, last one. I feel like that's buddy. Uh, weirdly less scary. Padded buddy. rooms. Are oh well. Like you the like. Matrix looks fun to me. Let's go enjoy it. Let's just live blissfully. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're pretty much at time. We're just going to start wrapping up. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really great. Like talking to you guys, Thank hearing you. your stories. Um, I'm sure everyone's gonna be super pumped to watch this film. I hope so. They're gonna they're gonna love it. Um, why don't we uh, reiterate like where it, when and where it's going to be released? When can uh, people watch it? Uh, in the short term, in the short term, they can uh, see it at the First Glance Film Festival at the Colonial this Saturday, the 14th of November. Uh, beyond that, I'm. Uh, you should be able to see it at a uh, streaming service near you. <laughs> yeah. 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 In, uh, Pennsylvania, is that right? One huh? more time. Theaters in Pennsylvania, is that right? Yes, the theaters in Pennsylvania, right outside of Philadelphia. So if uh, if you're in the mm -hmm. if you're in the neighborhood and there's still tickets left, by all means, well, it's probably too late. But if you're watching this, it's too late. Oh. It's already done. <laughs> that's uh -huh. true. That's true. But um, if you're but if you're if you're at the theater now, thank you. Thank you for being here. I I we're, we're I'm, I'm at the bar right now. So I'm not here in the theater with you. I'm at the bar. It either went yeah. really well or it went really bad. Either way, I'm at the bar. <laughs> Go buy Todd a drink. All right, guys. Either way. Buy Todd a drink. Uh, the theater at some point. That'd be nice. Um, Let's go ahead and give you guys each a few seconds to uh, go ahead and plug any, if you have social media that you want to plug, if you have any upcoming projects that you're excited to just throw out there that you can talk about. Uh, my, my social media is, my Instagram is at dedicated father series. Ooh, That's my Instagram. Like that. I got a new show uh, and a movie coming out in February oh. of 2021, Saints and Sinners on Bounce TV, the the, t the television show and the movie. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, what else? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, thank you guys for tuning into this. I'm super excited to hear everybody's feedback on We Need to Talk. Todd, yeah. I'm gonna bug you about distribution. We don't have a date yet, but hopefully we'll soon. Um, I just found out that a uh, deadline ran an article two days ago yesterday that another one of movies is coming out January 8th. So Todd, don't pick that day. But I will. Any other I will actually. Okay. I will. Okay, whatever. <laughs> or yeah. we'll, we'll name a holiday after it. And then we could film a documentary on all the Maslow fans that are so irritated that both movies are coming out the same day. Yeah. I would. I'll I'd like the other number one on that get, fan list. Get three movies out on the same day just to piss people off. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Please, more, important, more importantly, when's BTR coming back? That's what everybody really wants to know. That's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. Do does say. Um, I don't have an answer there. Obviously, you know, the guys and I have been chatting during quarantine. We put together some fun stuff to try and uh, bring some levity to this crazy year. And yeah, we've been having fun, even just writing some stuff, but nothing official at this point. I mean, honestly, Person, personally, any other guys, we can't tour or play music until it's safe anyways. Yeah. So we kind of got to wait it out, but maybe someday <laughs> shortly after that. James, if you could write wow. me a song <laughs> pretty soon would be nice. <laughs> yeah, it'd be something about, you know, Fuego or burning the house oh. down. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't. Don't tell me, I don't want any surprises. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. You're going <laughs> to love it. I am. Oh my God. <laughs> make it about us. Well, Jonathan's on set now. John, what do you got going on? Uh, I, I'm i going to be in the next uh, Gossip Girl. Uh, it's like a, we're on HBO. We're currently shooting it now. Um, so look out for that. It's going to be crazy. Um, very dramatic. Very juicy. Exo, exo. Gossip Jonathan Spore. Fernandez. Jonathan <laughs> Fernandez. Yeah, Jonathan, Jonathan Fernandez. Um, and then I, I've been, I, I pretty much only use Instagram, uh, and that's a J fan, J T H I N prime. Uh, and there's some movies too that I'm going to have coming out, but I just don't know when everything's just like yeah. pushed yeah. out so between this and, um, 
there's a Spider-Man movie called Morbius with Jared Leto that's supposed to come out at some point. Um, but yeah, I don't know, we'll see. It's great. Cool. Anything for you, Em? Um, I'm just hiding up in Canada for the meantime, waiting out quarantine. But um, you can find me here in Canada if you want to give us a ring. If not, um, <laughs> got to call the queen for that one. Um, <laughs> but please come up whenever you can, guys. <laughs> and I think I think more most importantly, everybody can follow Great Scott because he does have social media. You know, we can Great. follow all that. So yeah, he's he's super important. He would let you know that. So he's got Instagram and and all that. But we've lost Jackie now. Oh. Great Scott. Oh, there we are. Graham. Oh, what happened? On okay. the ground. There you are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can find Great Scott on Instagram and Twitter and everywhere. Talking Apparently to TikTok jokes. too. Yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> He's not on TikTok though. We need to talk as social media. You can certainly look there. Yeah. And, but uh, yeah. I have a reason to yeah. download TikTok for the first time ever. Here we go. <laughs> Be safe out there, Jonathan. <laughs> You see me doing a uh, reenactment of thriller videos. Can't wait. I might sign up for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And once again, thank you, Jackie Dallas. Um, I can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Jack's Dallas. Uh, to everyone watching, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, don't miss the rest of the First Glance Virtual Film Festival. We'll be screening many great films and hosting so many fun panels through the 15th. So don't miss out. Um, hope you guys all stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your weekends. Bye. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks, your faces. Thanks guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.